Hello, I'm Matt Pat, and welcome to another theory session. It should have been a live stream. Don't have enough subscribers for that, but I'm doing a live, a sort of live video. I'm not cutting anything, so everything I say and ramble on about is there. Um, please leave some comments if you have any questions or theories that you really want answered. And if I get into this video now, it will probably take about 20 minutes, so I apologise for everything. Uh, we'll leave our Discord groups so if you want to join the theorist group. Feel free to, we're always welcoming of new theorists or people with new ideas, that'll be quite fun. But let's get into the first question at the top. Why did Matt Pat not see the other guests after dying in season 3? Well, this theory is came off a question that I basically started asking around and people were like, well maybe he did or anything like that. But he, he specifically would have said, and he would have known if Colleen was dying, if he actually did see them when he died, but he didn't. So what actually happened? Well, as people may actually completely not discard, there are three worlds. Alive. Dead. World between worlds. Now, people never really analyse that, that name, that middle one. World between worlds. It is a world between death and living. It's that world between. Basically, they're not dead and they're not alive. They're stuck. So, what does that mean? Well, MatPat has been trapped in the world between worlds, whereas the other guests just died. They just went wherever. They just died or just died and they stayed where they were. However, MatPat was trapped. And there, is, there could be a reason for why MatPat was trapped. Maybe he didn't die properly or he was dead but didn't die. Or the SAE intended that way. Maybe the SAE even predicted that MatPat would die, and they knew that MatPat was going to be revived. Maybe the SAE actually knew. And instead of taking him to the other world, they explained everything to Matt in there. And it also, if you think about it, when Matt came back, he was fully supportive of Joey. After he completely criticised in, in episode 5, he came to completely support Joey, because whatever the SAE told him in the world between worlds ended up them being revived. But we'll get more into about the SAE's revival a little bit later. But I think this second question is, I think, what a lot of people are trying to think about. How does the crystal link to season four? That crystal that Joey is holding in season three, that one in Nicholas's chest, a carnival master's chest, if people don't know him by his first name. How does it link to season four? How is Joey going to get to season four? Well, of course, everyone's going to take the joke off. He's going to fly there, but that's not what I believe. I believe that that crystal links to season four over one big reason. Curse. Curse of Hawaii. Now everyone's saying, and I do believe that the, the whole thing was filmed in Hawaii, but that curse of Hawaii, what could it be? Well, it's actually Pele, the goddess of fire's curse. She is the protector of all the volcanic rocks and all the sand in Hawaii. If any of it is taken off the island, it becomes cursed, and who knows what happened with seven years of bad luck. However, that crystal could be, uh, let's say, a volcanic rock. A crystal is a volcanic rock, and now Joey has it. Now, this also links to why the Carnival Master does not look human in season three. Because if you look at the other two seasons, they look human. I mean, they have mythical powers, but they look human. And in season three, the carnival master, Nicholas, does not look human. And this is what I believe he was cursed with. He was basically cursed physically and mentally with evil because before he even became the carnival master, he was already true evil. Not ultimate evil evil, but just true evil. There was no good within him. And of course, he, would have, he must have been human before because he has a daughter named Lucy who actually appears in episode 9 of season 3. So of course the Carnival Master must have been human at some stage and that crystal transformed him. Now people would criticise me saying well if Carnival Master switched how can Joey not switch with the crystal now in his hands? Here is a simple explanation. Joey is not pure evil but the way he looked at the camera would suggest that evil is within him, and I can tell you when I believe he became evil, season 2, season 3, season 3, episode 1, when he knew full well by signing that contract his friend would die. That shows that Joey is now accepting more of evil ability, like the SAE themselves, 
but now Joey is becoming evil, even letting his friends die to save his own skin. But he is still good because he doesn't want his friends to die, but he wanted to save his own skin, so he had to do what he had to do. Question three. Where do you go when you die? Now, I cannot answer this one because I don't know, but I can tell you a little bit of information that could lead to my personal opinion. Of course, when you die, except from Matt and Joey, you don't go to the world between worlds. You just die. You are gone. You're kaput. You, I believe you don't go to a grave, though. You don't go to the evil dimensions. Um, I do, however, believe that you go to another era. An era that you're trapped in. You're kind of binded to that era until that, like, a curse is released. Well, instead of being a curse, until they can be saved like a prophecy. Now, where they're trapped, I cannot specifically say, but they are definitely trapped in an era, maybe in a different dimension, maybe in the actual dimension, just stuck in an era, and they needed to be salvated. And, of course, the only person that can salvate them, only two people can salvate them, Joey and Matt Pat. Now, why do I say Joey and Matt? Well, of course, I don't think Matt may appear in Season 4, Season 5, or any All-Stars, or the finales, of course. However, Matt is able, because he is technically still a dead man, and he is able to travel between eras, and actually travel through the world between worlds to get to an era, like Joey. So they are both able, but Joey will be the one, because he has the connection directly with the SAE, including the contract. But... Where exactly they go, I do believe it has something to do with the Renaissance period, medieval times, um, as that's where I believe the whole conflict between the SAE and the Ultimate Evil started. Anyway, question four. How are the SAE more involved than we believe? Well, of course, if we look at their front, they fight evil. Um, they, they basically cure curses, um, and they use mortals to do so. And themselves, they actually do fight with their own skin. However, I believe season two actually may be the answer of why Joey Graceffa was chosen by the SAE more. It's because if you look at season two, the only way the sorceress can get her powers back is by a mortal. A mortal or humans from the future that have to get the, the, the crystals or the, the gems to be able to fix the crown and give her the full power. So she needed the mortals and I believe it's the same for season one, two and three and four. The ultimate evils need mortals to be able to, and the SAE know that. But the SAE also know that the mortals are the only way, uh, mortals from the future, are the only way that they can actually clear the evil. And they support Joey by giving him enough information to fight, but also to save their own skin and revive their own. Of course, we knew that people died, uh, the two SAE members died in season three, and were revived because they knew about the heart, because, as I said with MatPat, they knew what was going to happen, and they're just helping Joey do it. That's how they're more involved. They're trying to save their own skin, but they are using people from the future, Joey Graceffa, to do it for them. That's how I believe the SE are more involved, and that's why I also believe how it links to why Joey was chosen. Joey was inherited the house. Maybe it may have been to do with Shane Dawson. I mean, Shane and Joey are good friends, and maybe Shane knew he was going to die, so he had to give his job to somebody who was willing and joey was probably the first person in mind doesn't um that kind of links to another question who gave joey the house well it could have been the ultimate evil or it could have been the sae because the sae knew that the house was evil maybe making a fake contract and off kind of just rolling with it we don't know but whatever happened it's quite interesting anyway let's move on to the next thing up here it says time travel or different dimensions Time travel is the premise of Back to the Future going from one place to another, to another, back in time, forward in time, to the present, to the past, anywhere, basically, to any time. Dimensions are basically an alternative reality. They're happening at the same same time. Same people, just in a different dimension, living a different reality. And this is why I believe that everything we've seen is time travel, but also different dimensional opportunities. I believe the SAE are not part of our dimension. We would know a bit more about them if so. I believe that the SAE are part of another dimension and Joey is basically trapped in this other dimension where it is full of evil and full of good. 
and Joey is basically trapped in this different dimension trying to help unintentionally fight against it by going through the eras. And the reason why I believe it's also in another dimension is the fact that in the, our reality, the other YouTubers would know that, oh yeah, I've heard about the Everlock place, oh yeah, I've heard about this, about this m mass murderer, I won't go there. But if there's another, another dimension, then it just seems like a party. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to this random place. Party! They don't even know about the actual evil that's within there. And that's how I believe the dimension is involved. And also, Eerie Dimension also links to where the guests go when they die. They're in another dimension. And that's why the guests from season one, two, three never question about Timothy Delaghetto or Glozell or anyone who actually died. Alex, they don't even know that they died because they never exist in the era anymore. And the only way to get them back, ironically, is to get them back to the dimension and everything will be fine. The only people that actually know about the dead people are the dead people themselves and the survivors. And the SAE and the ultimate evil. But the point is, different dimensions, that's where they're fighting in, that's where the guests, the dead guests are, and that's also why no one knows about these certain places or any of the events because it never happens in our reality it's another reality now that's a good point when people think of this theory um they will probably think stupid right however when we think about etm we have to stop thinking about our reality about time travel not existing about aliens and stuff because in the etm reality we've proven anything is possible and that is literally how and the reason why i believe dimensions is a good thing is it even appears in season two's title about different dimension so it proves that dimensionals do exist it's just is it that the case with the guests or is that the case with joey well we can only find out question seven uh, i have on here how are pirates involved well this is something i'm not going to glance too much on because everyone has their own theory I believe, however, the pirates are going to be the first lieutenants. Um, just like when Joey made the kind of teaser about um, season three, he taught, he showed a picture of a Ferris wheel and clowns, and clowns ended up being just the first lieutenant. I believe the pirates are the first lieutenant. They may chase after the crystal, steal the crystal, thinking it's treasure. Actually, it's not, and it's just going to curse them. But because they're chasing the guests and everything, somebody's going to have to walk the plank and die. Not exactly walking the plank, don't know if they're going to be shot or anything like that. However, the pirates have got to be involved with um, that initial problem with the crystal because it looks like treasure. However, if that is true about pirates, here's a cool fact for you. Um, it's not until 1760 the first pirates um, kind of enter uh, Hawaii that it's a British pirate. I think it's Captain James. So if you want to know how back we can go, we can go up to the 1760s if you want to make it um, contextually correct. So anything after the 1760s, I know there are a lot of people theorising that we're looking at the 60s. Um, and actually a really cool fact is I believe it could be 1959 to be exact because that is the year, um, August 1959 to be more exact, that when Hawaii became the 50th state of America. So maybe this curse may be linked to when uh, Hawaii became the 50th state of America. I don't know, this is my belief. So from all the knowledge we, we know is I've made a little mini timeline of ETN as we know it. Of course, the SAE and the Ultimate Evil fight. Um, they are now inhabiting the uh, curse, well, well, the Ultimate Evil is kind of inhabiting cursed places, um, putting Ultimate Evils there, Carnival Master Sorceress, Arthur, and whoever the Ultimate Evil is, or the Ultimate Good. Pele could be the the biggest like lieutenant and everything, but she's just trying to protect the island with this curse. And maybe she really is good, or probably another Moana situation. Hmm. But anyway, the ultimate evil and the SAE are fighting, they inhabit places, and um, the SAE recruit uh, Shane Dawson to fight against the evil. And then um, they, Joey is invited to become the owner of a house with a deed of course that was being signed on that night quite ironically all the guests arrive Shane um, unfortunately dies um, it's quite sad um, and when he dies Joey now becomes the SAE member intentionally not however how he wanted it but now since he is kind of binded to the SAE he's stuck with them uh, season go by and lots of deaths and then Joey sign kind of takes the deed with him, and when he takes that deed, 
he basically possesses the evil within the house. And then he tries to go back to normal times, normal dimensions of a normal life. Doesn't work out. Ends up in season two at his own risk. And then kind of just doesn't remember. He blanks. The sorceress basically turns Joey into a human puppet for the vampires. Season two goes on by. Joey dies. Joey goes to the world between worlds. Not dead, not alive. And the SAE kind of inhabit the uh, world between worlds. Whereas I believe the ultimate evil inhabit the dark dimensions. So with the SAE, they... Ooh, that's actually quite interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that out loud. Um, that's just come to my head. What if because the guest died because of the because the guest died because of the lieutenants, they and they went through the dark dimensions to the era. That's where the dimensions come in. They go to a different dimension because they died at the fault of the the ultimate evil. That makes sense if the ultimate evil inhabit um, there. Um, inhabit the dark dimensions, the ultimate evils, and SAE inhabit the world between worlds. Both are the exact same thing, but the kind of, there's a war in the world between worlds sort of thing. Interesting. But with ETN, uh, we'll go back to season two, so of course the season go by as Joey dies, he is taken to the world between worlds. Even though he died at the hands of the uh, sorceress, where he should have been taken to the dark dimension, the SAE save him, take him to the world between worlds, give him the option, save yourself, or die and he chooses to save of course he invites more guests season goes by matt dies taken to the world between worlds he's protected by the sae i think they only get that once in a while and they save matt bring him back and of course the sae members fight and now joey possesses the crystal he is now inhabited with a little bit of evil uh, just a little bit more evil because it's a cursed crystal and that's where we cut up to Another question that could probably be answered as well is why does Nicholas change back to a human after he is killed? Well, there are a few explanations that I can probably tell you. Number one, it could be simply he have to wait a bit longer. We never see him actually transform. Maybe he was with the crystal for long enough that he actually fully transformed into the evil. And maybe if Joey's just like that, he may transform into something similar to Nicholas. I don't know. But I do believe that Nicholas was human first before he became a weird boar thing. And the last one um, has a big, big, big uh, question mark next to it. And it's to do with hallucinations. Now, of course, one of my favourite episodes that links to a lot of other episodes is season one, episode nine, Wicked Hallucinations. And the theory does not have enough evidence to support it, but I do like the theory and I'm going to stick by it. What if the... Lieutenants are poltergeists, ghosts, or just hallucinations. And when you kind of, with a hallucination and everything, when you snap out of it, it disappears. What if the guests per episode are trapped in just another wicked hallucination? And as soon as they cleanse it or kind of relieve it, it goes away, like a ghost. If we actually think about the movie Ghost, um, a guy dies, but you're not taken to heaven or hell. He is not finished with his duty on earth. And until he does, until he makes sure his wife will be okay without him, he does not go. And it's the same with the, the, the lieutenant, with the ultimate evil. Until their artifact has been cleansed, until they can be cleansed of their evil, they are stuck fighting. And of course they only come at certain times, but they are stuck fighting against the lieutenants, um, start fighting against the guests, of course. And that's why I believe they're more hallucinations or ghosts or poltergeists compared to actually being real life human beings, except from some exceptions. Of course, some of, there will be exceptions to the rule uh, with the hallucinations. I think some of them, most of them maybe, but there will be one or two that I don't believe follow the rule, but I can't tell you exactly who. I'll have to look back at the episodes and kind of make my predictions. But that's everything that I am up going to update you on. There are a few more things, but I'm not going to update you on them for now. I'll probably have to say that for another video, just before ETN comes out. A little bit of a little dabbing. I can't wait for the actual teaser. I really can't wait to actually see the proper trailer, see how much I can take out of that. But for now, I'm going to leave you all. Please subscribe. As I said, I'm sorry this sounds really long drafted and you probably haven't stayed till here. But if you have, congratulations. Please like, please subscribe. I'll leave a link to the Matney Discord theorists and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.